In the previous video, we saw what is generative AI and how we can use it to be more productive. In this video, we are going to see how we can efficiently talk to an AI. There are a lot of AI these days. There is ChatGPT, there is Copilot, there is Gemini, etc. We need to master the art of talking to these AI applications. And this is where prompt engineering comes into picture. So in this video, we are going to look at what is prompt engineering how to fine tune the models using prompts, using zero shot learning, one shot or few shot learnings. There are concepts like tokens, byte pair encodings or vectors. We will briefly touch upon that because to understand AI and the further videos, we need to briefly touch upon these terms. There is also something called as hallucinations in AI. We will look at what are these hallucinations. And then finally, I will end the video with a food for thought so we can discuss something in the comment section based on what you think about that particular thing. So what is prompt engineering all about? Imagine you have a LLM model. There is a chat interface using which you are interacting with it. You are going to interact with a natural language and the LLM needs to understand that. So the language in which we interact with these LLMs, these are natural languages and we call these as prompts. So prompts are a way you using which we construct our sentences and the text in a way such that the LLMs can understand the language much better. To make it more streamlined, there is a stream of work called as prompt engineering, where engineers go and train the models in such a way that you can train these deep learning models to understand the natural languages in a way which the LLMs will be able to process these messages and give efficient responses back. A classic example which we saw in the last video is the same here. So I have a chat interface. I'm talking to the LLM model. I'm asking how can I get access to my profile page? Uh, if the LLM is not able to understand, it says that, sorry, I don't understand that. However, prompt engineers go and check these kind of failures or the prompts which were unresponsive or which did not result in an efficient outcome. Then they go and fix the prompts or the LLMs to make sure they understand this particular question or sequence of questions. Essentially, prompts are a bridge between the LLM and the practical language based tasks, which we ask the models to do or come up with. So to make these prompts more efficient, we need to learn few deep learning concepts such as zero shot learning, one shot and few shot learning. So let's look at what is zero shot learning. So as the name suggests, zero shot learning is a machine learning scenario where an AI model is trained to recognize and categorize objects or concepts without having seen any examples of those categories or concepts during the training. A good example of that, uh, maybe we can try it out with ChatGPT. Uh, let's go into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to um, maybe create a new bird, right? Which doesn't exist right now. So let's do that. Can you create a new bird which does not exist? So here, if you see, I'm asking it to create a new bird which doesn't even exist. So ChatGPT is saying that I am creating a bird called Silwing. The Silwing is a medium sized avian species characterized by its iridescence plumage, which simmers, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So what ChatGPT did is it created a new bird based on what it had an understanding about birds. So that's what it did here. So it is just creating a new bird with appearance, uh, which is a streak, streamlined feathers and things like that, uh, refract light. Uh, it should also, it's also showing us the habitat, the behavior, the diet it, it has. Uh, it's crazy, right? Maybe we can ask it to do a similar thing for an animal as well, right? So it can go and create a new species altogether based on some of the knowledge what it had. So I am asking ChatGPT to give me something which is not existent. However, it is going and creating something new out of the box based on the understanding which it had. And that's what is zero shot learning. So you try to hit the card without even training that particular model with some specific data. So in this case, we train the model maybe with birds, but then we do not train um, specifically with this particular animal. So what the LLM did is it created a new species altogether based on the features and the characteristics of the existing birds which it had and that's what is zero shot learning so similar way you can try out different concepts you can create um, different gen ai components using zero shot learning so the next thing is one shot learning 
in one shot learning as the name suggests these deep learning models are given one um, input and using that input it can give us some response so let's again test it out for example i'm going to ask um, chat gpt to uh, give me can you or i will ask it to predict the temperature right now right so can you predict the temperature right now so if you see chat gpt is not integrated with the real time world so it is saying that i cannot provide real time information or predictions including current temperature readings you can check the current temperature by using weather website that's what it is saying so this is how um, the prompt engineering comes into picture so if you remember the diagram which i had shown where it's not able to respond now the prompts engineers job is to make sure chat gpt responds in a proper fashion so i am going to give one shot learning so that it can learn and then respond to us so i'm going to say it feels a bit cold here can you predict the temperature so i'm giving it one information which is i'm saying it's a bit cold here so can you now predict the temperature right so earlier it said that it cannot predict because it doesn't know what's happening right because it's not plugged into the real time information however i'm giving it a clue saying that it feels bit cold can you now predict the temperature now let's see what chat gpt responds with so if you notice here i mentioned that it is cold here it is warm here i tried mixing and matching so it says that i cannot provide the real time predictions but if it's generally cold where you are you might expect the temperature to remain chilly unless there is a change in the weather pattern right so this is slightly learning from what we have told right though it did not return me the temperature but it is able to predict that the temperature is going to stay the same way unless the weather pattern changes and that's what is one shot learning now coming to the few shot learnings few shot learning is giving few more samples right not just one sample but then maybe few more samples i'm going to give maybe um, uh, a prediction right for example i am saying it feels like 10 degrees here can you predict the temperature now so it says that i can't provide real time predictions of the current temperature however if it feels like 10 degrees celsius that's relatively cool so depending on your location on the time of the year it could be typical for the season if you're indoors it feels chilly so it's just like improvising based on the input we are giving and the data which we are providing the moment i said can you predict the temperature now it said blindly no but if i'm giving some more information it is predicting based on what input we have given so these are the different learning techniques in which you can change your llms and behave it the way you want it coming to some of the internal concepts of these AI training models so there is something called tokenization tokenization is a way in which you train these llms so the llms are trained in a specific vector or a specific format for example these machine learning models will understand only binaries right so if i have text messages it cannot be trained with text instead we will be trained with binaries so i'm going to train my llms with binaries but how do i do it imagine i have my words or natural language which i'm typing so these are text so we need to convert these text into tokens right and these tokens can be converted into vectors and in order to convert these words into tokens we need to understand or come up with a way to identify and then create tokens and that's where byte pair encodings are helpful so for example let's say i have a text called welcome to tech primers so this particular sentence can be split into multiple words so there could be welcome separately split two separately split tech can be separately split primers can be separately split as well right so these tokens needs to be tokenized and using byte pair encoding we have split them right and there are different methodologies in which you can split these tokens for example i am going to look at uh, chat gpt um, using their tokenizer so there is a tokenizer publicly available so i am going to say welcome to tech primers and this shows the tokenization so welcome to tech primers got tokenized into five different tokens so welcome is separate to tech is separate prime prime is also separate and then primers is separate right and from the tokenization we can convert this into a vector format so if i click on the token id it generates 
token IDs like this. So it gives a machine readable format which the LLMs can understand. So we can use these vectors to be given as an input to the LLM. So LLMs will process these vectors and know and they plot them internally in their knowledge base and then it, they identify the results, try to connect the dots and then give the result back as again a token. Again, the token gets reverse engineered and then converted into like text and then given back to us. So this is how it looks like. So there is a Gen AI model and within the Gen AI model, we can have a vector database uh, where we can store these tokens and then you leverage these tokens for the LLMs to make decisions based on the input, whatever you provided. So anything and everything you need to talk to LLMs, it will be done using these binaries or, or vectors and using those vectors, we can decode these vectors and then give the response back to the users. Coming to hallucinations, hallucinations are basically bluffs where the LLMs can bluff if they don't know information. So most of the time, if let's say during a viva in your college, if your professor is asking something and if you don't know something, you just bluff, right? It could be in your viva or it could be in your answer sheet. We generally bluff as humans. So we have the tendency to create something artificially which doesn't even exist same way llms can also do that so it can artificially create something which doesn't even exist and it might be false as well that's why you see this disclaimer everywhere saying that chat gpt can sometimes create mistakes please consider checking before important information so that's where hallucinations play a major role so you cannot rely completely the ai yet so we have not there yet but then there are different techniques in which you can hallucinate and then reduce the number of hallucinations with the LLM goes through. So there are different techniques in which we can reduce the number of hallucinations, but then a model is like our human, it can hallucinate in some cases. So, so a food for thought, how can the temperature get dynamically updated um, in an LLM's response? See, we saw um, it was not able to connect to the internet to get the temperature, but then how can that be done? if the LLM is already pre-trained. So we are al always saying that LLMs are large language models which are pre-trained with some data, but then with the changing dynamic temperature updates, how can these LLMs get information dynamically from a changing world? Do let me know your answers in the comment section below. I'll respond to each of your comments and we can have some good discussion about your thought on this. Just to summarize what we saw, we saw what is prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is a way in which you prompt your LLMs so that you can get responses in a more efficient fashion from the LLMs. We can fine tune these models using zero shot, one shot, or few shot learnings, which are deep learning techniques where our natural language gets converted into vectors and tokens so that you can talk to the LLMs, you can input these vectors and then get output as vectors and then they get decoded as natural language in a way we which we wanted finally we also saw some hallucinations which do exist in the ai world so we need to make sure hallucinations are minimal so that we can get better results for efficient usage of the ai model i hope this particular video was very helpful as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much